Hello. I'm noticing with each episode, I'm just doing it weirder. But yeah, yeah. Hello is definitely one of the things that you can go as weird as you want. So this is chapter six. And, uh, well, I mean, so far, I've talked about many things. But I never talked about two things in a row, have I? Well, this is not going to be it. We are going to actually hark. Hark? Is it? Is that the correct? We are going to recall and go back to episode 4 where I talked about Sand, my new script. Subject to change of name still. But yeah. Self-indulgence is the word that we use to describe Bob Fosse or certain uh, postmodernist directors like the Coen brothers, Quentin Tarantino or David Cronenberg. The problem is I love all of these people. I love Bob Fosse, I love Coen brothers, I love Quentin Tarantino and I love David Cronenberg. So I'm going to be very (laughs) self-indulgent. Episode 4 I named after a script I had finished that week. This episode I'm going to call That Night the World Ended, which is the name of my short story that I uh, finished this week. It, it, it took a long time for me, by the way. <laughs> well, um, the stopwatch today is not on my phone. I searched for online stopwatch on Google and <laughs> yeah. I've been talking for two minutes and I've said nothing. Story of my life. (laughs) The drink today, again in a plastic bottle beside me. Plastic one and a half water bottle, one and a half liter water bottle. Is some... I've talked about this before, I think, when I... uh, When I got my... uh, peach flavored instant drink and my cherry flavored instant drink they sent me two packets of mango flavored which i hate i hate the uh, flavor of mango i i don't I hate is a strong word i mean i'll eat it or i'll drink it if there is nothing else but i won't choose it there are certain things I hate more than mango, like, I don't know, eggplants and uh, tomatoes. Oh, I hate raw tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes are only good if they are in a paste form or if they are in a ketchup form. So, yeah. And, well, they sent me a c- couple packets of mango and I said, well, let's try it. And uh, because then I could justify that, well... My packets are running low. I need to buy some more. I hope there is more. I have a sort of an inkling that the company might have gone out of business or something. But, uh, well, let's hope. (laughs) Uh, I thought if I drink the mango ones, then uh, I could extend the life of my three remaining packets of the flavors that I actually like. And the mango flavored one isn't bad. It, weirdly enough, it tastes tastes a bit like orange. It looks orange. It's not really that overpowering, and I don't really give it time to, well, do the wine thing and you taste it that much. So it's okay. It's literally just sugar in a water bottle. <laughs> Which weirdly enough, I used to think. When I was a kid, I know I'm derailing hard, but this is a story I I think it's kind of interesting. I might be wrong. I'm wrong in most times. But uh, when I was a kid and I used to drink a lot of sodas and, uh, well, sugary stuff, sweet stuff, I, I love them. And... People would say, you know, they have sugar in them and sugar is bad for you and all of that. And it got me thinking, well, I like this stuff and I know they're bad, whatever, but what if I drink sugar water? I put sugar in water 
effectively making like a simple syrup. It doesn't taste good. <laughs> I, I, it, all of this stuff have other flavors to it. Sugar and water does not taste good. Now add a little bit of lemon juice to it and it's amazing. That was a chef's kiss. Why do I do it? You, you can't see it. <laughs> so, actually, I had a different plan for this episode. I have a tendency to forget what I want to talk about because my brain works like that. So I usually just write in my saved messages in Telegram. There's, it's like my personal own notebook and uh, I'm going to move the... Uh, uh, what do you call it, voice recorder, and um, my original plan was I'm a writer with no audience, and that means I'm a poor writer. Oh, that P hit bad, I'm sorry. By the way, the noise you hear is still the cooling unit because it's fucking hot, man. It's fucking hot out here. <laughs> but the fact is, I wrote that in... Around August 10th, which is like four days ago. And uh, first of all, a lot of people asked, I said, does anyone want to read this story? And a lot of people just told me yes. And that that was amazing. And uh, the other thing is, as I'm recording this, two of those people actually read the story and i i'm i mean i know they are my friends but when i've written bad and i've known i've written bad before they've told me so this time they were all praises that it's actually a really good story and what you did with the story and how you described like this part of the story is really good and uh, yeah it makes me feel uh, a little bit giddy <laughs> Which I know is narcissistic because the image of the writer, the image of a good writer is sort of that depressing uh, Bukowski style of, oh, all I write is shit, how dare you compliment me. You know, I like being complimented. I love it. When people compliment my writing, I actually realize, oh shit, I might know what I'm doing because nobody knows what they're doing. We just do it and hope nobody notices. <laughs> Uh, there's this uh, thing that the I don't remember who said it but the blank page is as intimidating to you than it is to a 70 year old writer so yeah <laughs> and uh, well the story is very simple three guys do a, a Latin cult ritual, sort of a throwback to old Christopher Lee movies, especially Devil Rides Out. And actually, one uh, one of my friends uh, said it made um, made him feel a little bit Lovecraftian, which is a good thing in my opinion. I'm not. No, I do, I don't mean the racism. Oh fuck you, Lovecraft! Why do you have to be a fucking racist? <laughs> <laughs> I'm mad at him for being a racist and making me think that oh my god I need to every every time say that I mean the guy's writing not even his writing I don't love his writing he's got this guy's uh, ideas in writing a story not his ideas about humanity 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 what what my accent is kind of a weird issue for me too i know i don't sound like it but i'm trying to talk with a british accent because i learned how to talk watching movies i don't know if i've said it before or not i'm sorry but i i learned english watching movies watching um, jeremy irons and christopher lee and so in my head good english sounds british uh, still even though i do have some favorite American actors too, you know, Dustin Hoffman, Robert Downey Jr., Jack Nicholson, all that stuff. But in my head, good English sounds like British. It sounds like Jeremy Irons. And uh, 
So yeah. <laughs> Why can't the English learn to speak? Remember that song from My Fair Lady and me babbling on? I want to do a episode on a musical someday. I think I'm obsessed with musicals. Which is true. I am. I am obsessed with westerns and musicals. And one day I will write a good western musical. Do we do have that? The movie was not good, but uh, Paint Your Wagon is actually a very good musical. No. I was born under a wandering star. Anyways, back to the subject at hand. I stu- I do still think I am a writer without a big audience. Or- okay, let me say it this way. A work of art, in my opinion, has a creator and it needs an audience. You can be as uh, abstract as you want about it. Oh, it's only for the creator. and But no, I, I disagree. If a work of art is created, put aside, never seen, never viewed, how is that a work of art? I know it it adds like a lure to it that oh my god this work of art was never seen. Look at how deep the artist is. But I I rather be shallow and have my work be seen. <laughs> I hate elitism and that sort of pseudo intellectual bullshit. Come on, let's not lie to ourselves. But yeah. I don't have any clicks of people, so actually this um, that night the world and then actually got read by or sent it to people from very different clicks. So that's actually very good because the two people who have read it and praised my writing, um, they were from very different uh, lines of life and perspectives and thoughts and philosophies and they both liked it so it means uh, there was something in there that could attract both of these people so there might be something there i'm actually looking to um you know find some contests or stuff like that i know there must be some for short stories i would love to have it published on some website or some place but i don't know the only website I know that sort of I can send it to, they, they all want Persian. And they, oh, by the way, I, I should have mentioned this. Persian is my mother's tongue, as you know, and all writers start in their mother's tongue. But this story is not in Persian, it's actually in English. I have written in English before, but I've actually written a, another short story called Trumpets of Glory, which was a depressing piece of writing to the point that people who have read it actually (laughs) asked me if I was okay which I wasn't when I wrote that story (laughs) Um, when I sent it for someone they read like the first couple of pages and they said are you okay (laughs) so we can't see why that one I'm not as static about as I am for this one because this one is actually a story I wanted to tell. It's it's very stupid, I'm not going to lie. It's not like the best story ever told, but it's fun and it's my style. And it's a story I actually like and I think I I I did okay, okay? That that's the thing and uh I know blowing thy own trumpet is not very cool but i mean uh, i like it (laughs) it's a good story but yeah um it's in english and uh, well english for me is still a weird thing because i i can talk and i can write it i can read it and i can listen to it but all of them i learned organically i never went to a class so i do have a shit ton of grammatical errors actually my first friend who have read it and uh, i don't know if he's going to listen to this 
but if you do he actually <laughs> proof with it as well as with it he said okay come on these these, these are fucking misspells and typos and stuff like that and the thing is some of them I, I there were typos like I meant muscled man but instead of D I pressed S but some of them I didn't have any idea that I was doing it wrong. So yeah. Even though even uh in one of our conversations he said that I am improving and I'm actually doing it better but well it's never going to be not never it's not a language that i know all of the rules to so when i write something it's sort of apparent that the guy um, is not a native english speaker <laughs> which i mean it could be a good thing or a bad thing on one hand uh, it gives it a certain flair my one of my professors i know was a teacher he taught me script writing, Shad uh, Rastin. He told me once that you have your own style in dialogue writing, which all of your characters are royalty. They talk very uh, royally and big, which, which is a good thing because, well, how many times have you told that what you write I can spot? You have a style. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah. But. Uh, what I was talking about? I'm sorry, this box fell to the floor and I <laughs> need to pick it up. So, yeah. I mean. On one hand, it gives it style. It's something that only me, coming from my background and my line of life, could have written. On the other hand, it might strike you as unprofessional or amateurish, which I, I understand. I mean, it's completely possible, not unheard of. But I need to just send it out there. By the way, and... Uh, I don't know if you've seen that movie or not, Juno. This was a weird movie. I think Jason Reitman made it. Um, who is the son of Ivan Reitman. Ivan Reitman, the amazing guy behind Ghostbusters. And Jason Reitman actually has a very good movie called Thank You for Smoking. Thank you for smoking. I said thank you. Thank you for smoking. And in Juno, there is this character portrayed by Michael Serra, who is the father of... Ellen Page's kid. I don't remember if he. I don't remember the gender of the kid. Because it's a, it's about the pregnancy more. And he, uh, when she is describing him, she says he eats a lot of those Tic Tacs, the uh, mints, the breath fresheners. And uh, not gonna lie, I totally get the craze. This box that fell is actually black currant. Compass fresh mints sugar free lie, but uh, yeah, and I'm kind of addicted to this. I do have a box of tic tacs also, and uh, these are uh, fresh mint, which I don't like. I don't like the taste of mint, which is why I, I feel more addicted to this black currant one. I'm actually going to buy a few more packages. Oh god, there were 50 in them. I think there's like 10 left. And I got it two days ago. I know too much of a thing is not healthy. So I'm actually kind of worried. I don't have an addictive personality. And I have less than a minute left. And uh, I know I'm unusually peppy in this one. I, I haven't slept through the night. So that might be it too. I'm kind of feeling a bit high <laughs> but yeah there is a okay sorry as usual if you want you can send me a message on anchor and i will display it uh, at the beginning of the episode and maybe even talk about that and uh, yeah so 
until next week i guess i see you and uh, well take care and if you want to read my story just tell me and i will send it to you <laughs> that was my phone why, why don't i silence that